Best buddies in Pokemon Go. Who are the best, best buddies in Pokemon Go? Why are we talking about this? Well, for one, we're in a buddy event right now in Pokemon Go, making it faster for you to, you know, accrue friendship and get your buddy excited so you can get even more friendship for your buddy Pokemon so they can become best buddy. That is... And uh, everyone's kind of got their brains popping out of their skulls about that best buddy breakpoint Dialga in the Master League. If you're not aware, if a Dialga has a 14 defense IV or higher, then it takes one less Dragon Breath damage from all chump, not best buddy Dialga, which allows you to completely dominate that matchup. So people have been asking, Ryan Swag, are there other secret hidden best buddy breakpoints in any league that can make my Pokemon have an edge in battle like the best buddy Dialga? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the fruits of my research for the Master League, the Ultra League, and the Great League. If you're curious what the best best buddies are for raid content, I already did a video on that months ago, so uh, link up above and in the description to that if you want to check that out. At any rate, let's get in to the best best buddies. For PvP. So starting out we have the basic here. We have Dialga v Dialga and this here is a level 41 Dialga. That's a level 40 Dialga. And you do, you know, the battle here. Generate the battle and uh, you can see, oh dang, what a victory over the mirror right there. And if you scroll down, you can see exactly what's happening. You can see that your Dragon Breath is doing 5 damage, their Dragon Breath is doing 4 damage, and the reason why you're doing more damage with your Dragon Breath than they are is because you have a high enough defense to reduce their damage. For example, if I were to take the IVs of the level 41 one, which is the best buddy, make it 14, bam, you can see that you are still getting the breakpoint. However, if you were to go back up, make it 13, uh-oh, now they're doing 5 damage to you. So as long as your Dialga is a 15, 14, whatever, ideally 15, uh, then this shouldn't hurt you in the mirror matchup at all if you want to best buddy your Dialga. So you got a little leeway there. There's also another cool thing with best buddy Dialga, and that's Garchomp. If you have a best buddy Dialga and they have at least a 15 attack IV, so if they have 15 attack IV, uh, well then your Dragon Breath will do extra damage to Garchomp, allowing you to beat Garchomp before it can reach its next charge move. Now you might be thinking, well what if it's a Sand Tomb, Garchomp Ryan Swag? Sand Tomb ain't fast enough. Sand Tomb is so slow that they can only possibly double Sand Tomb, and like, Garchomp doesn't care about Sand Tomb, look at that. Sand Tomb, okay. Next Sand Tomb, whatever damage. Dialga does not care. So as long as you shield the first charge attack coming from a Garchomp, and it's whatever, it could be anything, uh, well then Garchomp's not going to beat your Dialga if it's your best buddy and you have 15 attack IV. So that's another cool thing Dialga does. Now aside from this, I haven't witnessed any other swag coming from Dialga that is significant. Now when it comes to the best buddy breakpoint for Dialga here in the Master League, I told you guys about this before Go Battle League even came out. Swagman was beaten on his chest, telling you guys to best buy your Dialgas right away because it'd be so significant. So I was already on top of this then, and I already know many other interesting breakpoints for the Master League that could help you out. Back in February, people are asking about these breakpoints, so I decided to tweet about them here. And uh, yeah, so you got the Dialga matchup. Dialga, Mirror Smasher, Garchomp Slayer. Then you got Machamp, and Best Buddy Machamp's kind of interesting. It's just the one extra HP. You need that 15 HP IV so you can get the extra hit point when you Best Buddy it. And with that extra HP, you can tie with Dialga in the two shield situation instead of losing. Of course, you can always beat it by not throwing any charge moves to begin with, but then you don't get any of their shields, and then you have to shield one of their Iron Heads anyways, so... But usually Dialga will beat you in the two-shield situation, and having that one extra HP can allow you to tie with them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then you got Regice. Regice isn't all that great in the Master League, but hey, if you want to use it, uh, it can actually straight Blizzard to KO Togekiss, where if it wasn't your best buddy, you'd have to bait it with an Earthquake, which is like... That doesn't feel good at all. Well, with the extra HP, and I believe you're also getting a defense breakpoint here, you can just use Blizzard. You don't have to worry about Earthquake, you just Blizzard to KO Togekiss. It's still an ugly fight because they're too shielding you, um, but you win at the end of the day, and that's what matters, right? Uh, then there's Latios, <laughs> and it can get a breakpoint on Tyranitar, so one of the biggest threats to Latios is Tyranitar. You get a breakpoint on Tyranitar, so you can beat Tyranitar. Um, Latios sounds like a terrible idea in the current meta, because it's just all Steel types and Dialga and Giratina, all of which beat Latios, and then Tyranitar gets whomped by all of them too, so it's like, are you really going to say Tyranitar? Are you really going to use Latios? But 
hey, if uh, the meta changes, I don't think it will, then that could be significant. And then I got a couple more. I got Hydreigon versus Shadow Claw Giratina Altered Form. So normally you lose the one shield situation, um, but with this, you now win the one shield situation. I believe it's the one extra HP, but you might be doing one extra damage with your charge move. I don't remember the details here, but if you are bringing Hydreigon, just make sure it's a hundo, and then make it your best buddy, and you'll have a better time against Shadow Claw Giratina A specifically. Giratina A is kind of heating up because Giratina O got that big hit from the ominous wind nerf because now it can't bait as reliably, so Hydreigon. And then Hydreigon has some okay plays against steel type Pokemon as well, so uh, it gets destroyed by Dialga, but definitely not a terrible Pokemon. And you got Darkrai, and Darkrai can now bait to win versus Groudon rather than fall short of damage. So what Darkrai wants to do is to land a Focus Blast. So if you throw Focus Blast and they don't shield it, and then you throw a Foul Play somewhere in there and they shield that, well, you would lose the matchup because they'd just be surviving by like one damage. Well, if Darkrai has a 15 attack IV and it's your best buddy, well then Focus Blast deals one extra damage which is enough to close out the Groudon. Now, how common is Groudon, and how decent is Darkrai in the current Master League meta? That's uh, up to you to decide there, but having it as your best buddy can help it out in that Groudon matchup. And uh, that's about it, really. Um, I'd say as far as like the full in-depth brain research goes, I'm only 75% done with the Master League because there is a lot of intricate stuff, but all that little intricate stuff isn't significant. It's not winning you matchups, it's not losing you matchups, it's just, I don't know, boosting consistency a little bit, maybe allowing you to reduce some damage that you're taking, maybe allowing you to farm stuff a little bit better, uh, but right now I haven't found anything that is as significant as these ones are. And then once again you're probably sitting back going, well the Machamp is kind of interesting, but Dialga is the only one that's really going to matter here, Ryan Swag, and I have to agree with you. Dialga is the only one that really matters. Let's say your current strategy doesn't use Dialga, or maybe you can't personally use Dialga because the Dialga that you have don't have the right IVs to work out for the best buddy breakpoints. Uh, well, what else can you choose? Um, well, aside from these options, which are admittedly kind of weak here, it could be in your best interest to best buddy whatever Pokemon you're leading with. So if you're leading with a Metagross or a Melmetal, for example, a Kyogre, Togekiss, whatever you're leading with, if it is your best buddy, then it'll be more prone to overcome the mirror matchup because it'll have charge move priority. It'll have the slightly higher attacks that it needs in order to dunk on the opposing self, right? So that's another thing to think about if you don't want to best buddy Dialga or aren't going to use Dialga. Another one worth mentioning is uh, Lucario. <laughs> Lucario gets some fun ones. Uh, it takes one less damage from Metagross's Bullet Punch and one less damage from Rhyperior's Mud Slap. And then it also gets a breakpoint using counter against Mewtwo. Now, none of these factors really help it win any of these matchups in any grandiose way, or it doesn't help prevent it lose any of these matchups that's already losing, but it is a little something. So if you are a Lucario enthusiast and you ain't using the Dialga, maybe best buddy your Lucario and get that little slight edge over several things. Then next up we have the Ultra League. And with the Ultra League, we have a CP cap of 2,500 CP. Uh, so that means that there are Pokemon that do cap before the cap that are good in the Ultra League, such as Toxicroak, Licky Licky, Blastoise, Drapion, Registeel, Clefable, and Alolan Sandslash. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on Alolan Sandslash. I think it's pretty good in the meta, but hey, you know, you have to max it. That's a Stardust investment. I get it. At any rate, my current research into Ultra League Best Buddy Breakpoints is only about, I'd say, halfway, maybe a third complete from where I'd like it to be. Uh, keep in mind, the Master League one that I just dished out for you is only about 75% complete. At any rate, from what I can tell right now, none of these Pokemon are getting any significant special gains over the rest of the meta if you were to go for these best buddy breakpoints. So just like with the Master League, minus Dialga's existence, uh, whatever Pokemon you're leading with, or whichever one of these Pokemon you're actually using that cap before the cap, it could be a good idea to best buddy that one because A, they get you know a couple little extra stats there, and B, if they end up in the mirror matchup, then they'll have the CMP, charge move priority dominance, over the mirror matchup. Uh, so Registeel is definitely going to be a hot one, being one of the best Pokemon in the Ultra League meta. Back in the preseason, y'all were yelling at me, saying, Ryan Swag, you're dumb. Registeel's not that good. And now, we're in Season 1. 
and uh, we all got whomped by Registeel. We all now have learned how good Registeel is in the Ultra League. Uh, but yeah, no, make your Registeel a little bit better with that. Of course, if you're not using Registeel or you don't have Registeel, then go with whatever you do have and are using. As far as uh, CMP in the mirror goes, Clefable will probably be the most common other Pokemon on this list that you run into. So if you're using Clefable and they're using Clefable, then you can throw your Meteor Mashes that much sooner against their Clefable, which could help you out. Now, Lil' Sand Slash is a little bit spicy here. You know, it's more of an anti-meta Pokemon working against, you know, the Fairy types, the Grass types, the Dragon types in the meta. Also having some plays against Swampert as well. Maybe you should max out on Lil' Sand Slash. I don't know, man. Uh, but if it is your best buddy, you can see it has this 177 base attack stat. Clefable has a 178 base attack stat. You're winning this matchup anyways, but if you have it as your best buddy and they don't have their Clefable as a best buddy, well, then you can get CMP in that matchup. I know it's super niche, but hey, it is one thing. And like your charge moves shouldn't be lined up anyways, but who knows what happens in the battle for real, like when they come in, when you come in, all that kind of stuff, prior energy, prior damage. Uh, so this could be a little bit extra, you know, a little bit extra efficiency there on your Lolan Sand Slash. So if you got the hundo, uh, or you want to lucky trade your friend, try to get the hundo, make your best buddy, and uh, be that much better. But beyond all that, uh, so far I haven't found any Pokemon that have gotten the edge. And if I do start finding Pokemon that do get an edge in the Ultra League, you, you better bet I'll make a video on it, letting you guys know what those Pokemon are. And then finally, we have the Great League. And the Great League is actually pretty interesting here, unlike the Ultra League. First up, for the cap before the cap Pokemon, the All-Stars, we have Sableye and Metacham. Now a while back, for the Rose Cup, a Sylph Cup, I did an analysis on these guys as best buddies, which one's the best best buddy, because they were both allowed in the Rose Cup and best buddy just became a thing. And from the fruits of that research, I found that Metacham really isn't getting anything at all aside from the mirror matchup as a best buddy, so not really worth it. Sableye, on the other hand, though, does get CMP in the Sableye matchup. Metacham gets that too. Uh, but Sableye also gets a Shadow Claw breakpoint against Metacham. I know we don't really see Metacham in the Great League anymore, but hey, that's a breakpoint. And then there's also this weird matchup with uh, Sableye and Skarmory, and then it's like really weird and IV based, especially from the Skarmory side, but if that were to be an option for Sableye to overcome Skarmory, uh, the propensity for you to do that goes up a little bit because you do have a little bit more HP going for you and a little bit maybe more damage depending on their IV spread. So uh, three reasons to think about doing Sableye as your best buddy. That said, there is another option for best buddies and it's not capping before the cap, it's capping ever so slightly after the cap. And those Pokemon are Azumarill up here and Bastiodon. These two Pokemon don't cap before the cap, they cap just slightly after the cap, which means certain IV spreads could allow them to be a best buddy, which is effectively level 41, and uh, perform well, maybe even better than their non-best buddy counterparts. Because as you know, when it comes to PvP, low attack and high HP, high defense is more or less the name of the game. Now the thing to understand about Azumarill and Bastiodon being able to do this interesting thing with the best buddy isn't that their best buddy variants are vastly superior to level 40 variants. In a lot of situations, the level 40 iterations can be better than the level 40.5 or the level 41 variants. But what this does give players is more options for optimized IVs. So basically when it comes to Bastiodon, if you don't have like the, the 12, 15, 15 or whatever, well then your Bastiodon is going to kind of be second rate more or less. But if you do have the best buddy option involved, well then that opens up more IV spreads for Bastiodon to take advantage of. Uh, same with Azumarill as well. Azumarill actually has a lot of interesting breakpoint stuff going on. For example, if you meet the right attack and defense cutoffs on Azumarill, you can beat a Bastiodon without needing Hydro Pump. Another interesting cutoff is that if you have enough HP, you can beat a Registeel without needing Hydro Pump as well. So that's kind of interesting too. At any rate, there's only a handful of IV spreads on Azumarill that can achieve that. And if you don't have them, well then you don't have them. Well, with the best buddy feature considered, Azumarill does have access to more IV spreads that can achieve that. Now, if you're curious what those IV spreads are, I do have a whole crazy dang Azumarill IV deep dive analysis video already done. So if you wanna get learned up on Azumarill's many different breakpoints and all the different IV spreads that are optimal for Azumarill, I suggest you check out that video. So when it comes to the Great League, who is the best best buddy? 
Well, if you have access to every single IV permutation, mind you, every single Pokemon has uh, 4,096 different IV permutations they could have. If you have access to all of them, and there's no reason to upgrade an Azumarill or Bastiodon, well then I guess Sableye would be the best best buddy. However, when it comes to the options that you are afforded here, I would say Azumarill is the best best buddy by virtue of giving you access to more ideal Azumarill IV spreads. That said, if you have the ideal level 39, level 39.5, or level 40 Azumarill, and you don't need the best buddy version to do something that you can already do, uh, well then, you know, Azumarill loses some stock, we drift closer to the Sableye side of the force. But aside from that, nothing else is really significantly happening in the Great League. I mean, this kind of swag exists for every single Pokemon you can see here that's capping just after the cap, and then of course the same kind of swag is happening for Pokemon that cap before the cap, but none of these Pokemon are really significant for using it, so... Oh man, that was a lot to unpack. Uh, so, yeah, each league, who are the best best buddies? Well. In the Master League, Indisputed, it's Dialga. There's no getting around it, it's Dialga. Now if you're not best buddy in Dialga, then what are you best buddy in the Master League? Well, I gave you a list of examples of Pokemon that get some cool breakpoints there, but I think your best option after Dialga is going to be whatever Pokemon you're leading with. If the Pokemon you're leading with is common enough that you're going to run into the lead mirror, well, having that extra attack stat so you can get charge move priority over them is going to be pretty significant. So Dialga or whatever you're leading with. And then, of course, Lucario has all those little fun breakpoints that don't matter, but hey, Lucario is also kind of cool too. You can also lead with Lucario, but... Lucario isn't the best thing in the Master League either, it's a little spicy. So then the Ultra League. What is the best best buddy in the Ultra League? Well, if you're using Registeel, it's probably Registeel, because then you can get CMP over other Registeel. Then after that, I guess Clefable, so you can get CMP over other Clefable. It's sort of like the Master League, except so far we haven't identified any significant breakpoints yet for any of the Pokemon that are relevant for being a best buddy, so it's kind of, it's kind of lame. But uh, yeah, same idea as there. If the Pokemon you're using caps before the cap and you think it's going to be common enough that you're going to run into it, uh, well then make that your best buddy. Bam. Then who is the best best buddy for the Great League? Well, if you had access to every single IV permutation of every single Pokemon you could ever want the IV spread for, uh, mind you there's 4,096 different IV spreads, then Sableye would probably be the best one. Because A, Sableye is more common than Metacham, the other cap before the cap relevant Pokemon. So getting that CMP in the mirror, much more relevant. And then you also get a breakpoint on Metacham too, which is kind of funny. So you already beat Metacham, but now you like absolutely dominate Metacham, which is kind of hilarious. Are you going to see Metacham in the Great League or GBL? Probably not, but... Hey, that's one thing. Now, are any of these factors enough to make Sableye so good that you always want to have it on your team? No, definitely not. It's a very good Pokemon, but it's definitely not the best Pokemon that you want to bring all the time in the Great League. Now, that aside, I'd have to say the best, best buddy for the Great League is probably going to have to be Azumarill. But that's considering if you need to have a better Azumarill than you currently do. Basically, like I said, there's 4,096 different permutations of all the different IVs that you could have for any single Pokemon, and like only 10 of them are like super ideal for Azumarill. If you checked out my Azumarill analysis video, you'd already know that. And uh, having the best buddy option, because it caps near the cap, it opens up more IV spreads that can be optimized for Azumarill, so instead of 10, maybe there's 20 now. So it opens the door of possibility for people looking to upgrade their Azumarill. That said, if you already have the best Azumarill ever, or the best Azumarill ever for your specifications, then uh, I guess Sableye. At any rate, that's what we got so far. If you got any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more like it, well make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you want to support the Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. If you throw Focus Blast and they don't shield it, and then you throw a Snarl, what's it called, Foul Play? Why do I always get Snarl and Foul Play mixed up? At any rate, you throw a Foul Play,